the first thing I wanted to do is try to acknowledge um, some of the folks in the room. Um, uh, State Rep. Cronin is here, um, Cassidy, uh, Senator Timothy, State Rep. Dubois is somewhere right there, Michelle, good. Um, and let's see, we have State Senator Brady, um, um, Bishop Tony Branch from the NAACP. Where's Tony? He's around somewhere. Look, there he is in the back. Um, there are a handful of city councilors here who, like nobody gave me the, the names of the people who actually made it. So if you want to just sort of raise your hand and say, hi, I'm here. Um, <laughs> and then we have a couple of people who are representatives of, um, let's see. Uh, Stephen Lynch's office and Bill Keating's office. And if you want to just sort of say who you are, or raise your hands, thank you. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, leading off um, this evening is our uh, board chair of South Coastal County's Legal Services in the Justice Center, Katina Holton. Thank you. First off, thank you all very much for being here tonight. And this is such a joyful event to have this open house for this office. I am so glad to see so many smiling faces. Thank you to all our dignitaries, staff, friends. We really appreciate um, your support. Uh, this has been quite a journey, even though it's only three blocks from where we were. <laughs> the time and the effort that has been put in by everyone has been wonderful. It's been amazing. I can't thank you enough. Although I'm involved in it, I feel like I've been on the outside looking in and just so pleased with the efforts that had been made. I'm also very pleased that we were able to stay in downtown Brockton, being a former Brocktonian myself and still having a business here in the city. This continues to give access to those in our community who have the most need. And again, thank you very much to the staff. You did yeoman's work getting this done. I'm so pleased to see the elbow room uh, makes the job a little easier, mm -hmm. at least physically. Um, and again, your support in the community seeing so many faces, so many dignitaries that are here to lend your support. Um, it makes the job, as far as the board of directors, with what we can do with what is given to us, um, just a little bit easier. It's a day-to-day -day battle for what we do in the community, um, but having your support is absolutely wonderful. So thank you. I am glad you're here tonight, and we will continue with the program. Tobias, would you like to step up next? Tobias Collins is here from the mayor's office. He wasn't able to be here at the last minute because of another commitment, but Tobias is here to say a few things on behalf of the mayor. That was my speech. <laughs> I bring you greetings from the office of Mayor Bill Carpenter, who unfortunately could not be here this evening. But he did want me to extend that his, we are so impressed and appreciative of the services that have been provided to the Brockton community as well as surrounding towns by the Justice Center. I mean, you talk about immigration, housing, advocacy, the, no one does it better. So this is just the first of many great things to come, and we support you. Thank you so much. Senator Timmons. Um, Senator Walter Timoney, um, he has this wonderful district that goes from, like, north of Stoughton-Avon down through Easton and over to Bridgewater. It is a wonderful district. And, uh, <laughs> it is. We represent people in all those communities, even though um, Norfolk State, Stoughton and Avon are in Norfolk County. Um, and so thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much, Brian. Yes. Thank you. No, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It is a wonderful district for many, many reasons because of the people we all work for and the people I get to work with. Uh, in the case of uh, the Brockton delegation, you have an outstanding delegation, uh, Representative Claire Cronin. Uh, Senator Mike Brady, Representative Jerry Cassidy, and Representative Dubois. So it is a privilege to work with the Brockton delegation. The Justice Center of Southeastern Massachusetts makes us all better as people and makes us better as a society. So I thank you all for what you do for each and every citizen in our society and in our communities that we all represent. So thank you. We all look forward to wor working with you down the road. And uh, it's a privilege to be here tonight. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, Y'all know Representative um, Cronin, Hello. Stonehill grad, Suffolk University Law School, state rep for 11th. The 11th Plymouth District. Plymouth District. Brockton and Easton. Brockton and Easton. Um, for those of you who don't know, Mass Bar Association um, representative of the year, right? Last year? Yes, um, Well-deserved. Um, 
you know, her work with the um, Joint Committee of the Judiciary has led to some wonderful things in the, in the last year, um, including the expansion of the housing court um, statewide and some criminal justice reform. And so thank you for being here. Thanks. All right. Thank you. <laughs> it, it's my pleasure to be here. And I come here as one of a delegation. I have my House colleagues, uh, Representative Michelle Dubois, who actually used to work for this organization, so her service continues. Senator Mike Brady, Senator Walter Timothy, who you just heard from, and my dear friend, <coughs> Representative Jerry Cassidy, who I have the pleasure, pleasure of sitting next to in the House of Representatives. Um, I am the chair of the Joint Committee on the Judiciary, and in that role, I have an opportunity uh, to serve with so many wonderful legislators that care about the people in our district, the faces you see, um, the people you meet every day, the people with struggles. <coughs> this year we had a great opportunity uh, in this past session where we completely reformed our criminal justice system. Uh, it had been 50 years in the making and we did it from every aspect of our criminal justice set every aspect of our criminal justice system was reformed from the very first place where a person might intersect with our criminal justice system perhaps as a child right up until the time someone is released from prison and re-enters society or perhaps leaves prison on a compassionate medical release. So the work we did was vast. But the work that you do every single day in your job, I can't say how much it matters to this community, how important your work is. When I was sworn in to the United States Supreme Court, I was actually a little probably emotional and a little taken aback when I actually stood on those stairs and looked up and the words say, equal justice under law. And unfortunately, sometimes whether there is equal justice is dependent upon where you are born, where you live, what your zip code is. And I can say that this organization, you are on the front lines of making sure that the people in all of our courts, whether it be our housing courts, the superior court, the district court, you are in, on the front lines and making sure that there is equal justice under law. And you are serving our most vulnerable friends and neighbors. You help them with immigration, housing, family, any issues. And civil legal aid is so important because we must ensure that there is equal justice under the law. And without all of the staff attorneys in this building, I thank you for the work you do. It's, I, I'm actually in awe of what you do. We all know the pay is not what it should be. Uh, every year in our budgets, we fight for civil legal aid. This year, we had a $3 million increase. And for the first time, we hit, I believe, $21 million in aid in, for civil legal aid. <laughs> but the needs become greater. What was good enough for last year may not be good enough this year. And we want to make sure that we provide you the support that you need to continue to do the great, wonderful, and meaningful work that you do for our community. So I thank you and applaud you for all you do. Thanks. Thank you. So we would be remiss if we didn't hear from one of our alum, Representative Duvois. Um, and I, Michelle is really you good. Snazzy. Thanks. You look snazzy. Thanks. <laughs> um, so, in any event, thank you for being here. Thank you. So, I love all you guys. I'm happy to be back. You guys deserve this space. And I say, you know, kudos to the board of directors and 
Brian and Susan and everybody and all the staff for all you do. And I just want to take a moment and say, you know, we heard from, from my colleague, Representative Cronin, Chair of Judiciary, and I'm in going into my third, I'm in my third term now. And so I've seen um, some of the choices that our Speaker DeLeo has made when he appoints people to different positions. And often it's a good match, but I don't think I've ever seen in my time or heard about a better match than placing Cl Claire the chair of judiciary. She's a rising star. She deserves all the honors and, and she gets. And this is really your community here, right? Your people. And um, I just want to say among all of you how great of a job she's doing there. And I'm happy to be with you. And I know all the jobs you do, because I used to write grants to help fund your jobs. <laughs> so now I'm at the State House trying to help find money so you can keep doing the jobs you do for my constituents. So many of them are so poor. And you know their stories even better than I do. And I'm so glad that we all have value and struggle and that um, people that are poor are just as good as everyone else and we all deserve the same access to justice. So thank you very much. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, so I, I see another uh, alum of ours has just sort of walked in. Um, Judge um, Richard McMahon, thank you. Um, uh, when I started working in legal services in Massachusetts, he was the director of the new Center for Legal Advocacy, eventually became the executive director of Sim Simlac or South Coast? South Coastal, South Coastal. South Coastal County's Legal Services and had this uh, idea of like creating a justice center. Um, and here it is. So here it is. So thank you. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, ha happy to be here. I didn't hear all the remarks that preceded me, so I don't. And I've afraid I, I don't want to repeat uh, what folks have already said but when I think of uh, the Justice Center when I think of legal services I think of access to justice and um, I think what you're celebrating here today is a wonderful sign of access to justice this professionally appointed space downtown Brockton sends a real message about access and I think that is so critical and I applaud uh, the, the uh, Justice Center and the parent organization South Coastal I think that's just great and um, in my current day job, I'm a, a judge in the probate court, and I encourage you to c continue to work towards providing more lawyers to appear in courts <laughs> across the Commonwealth, <laughs> including the probate court. But uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, great to be here tonight, and good luck in your new space. Thank you all. Thank you. In a minute, we're going to hear from, um, well, I don't know, Jonathan, how many minutes are we going to hear from some of our staff? Um, but Jonathan Brammer from Trinity Financial, who's like, you know, driving this project, this office space and everything, is going to share a few words. Um, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, Jonathan Brammer with Trinity Financial. Um, on behalf of Trinity Financial, our principal, Jim Keefe, uh, Trinity Management, as well as our many lenders, investors, and government agencies that were integral in making this development uh, possible, it is my distinct pleasure to officially welcome South Coast County Legal Services and the Justice Center to Enterprise Maine. Yeah. Welcome. And I want to say a thank you to Susan and Brian, uh, the board, um, and the team for selecting our property to, to be your new home and the trust you put in us. Um, by joining the community, the growing community here at uh, the Enterprise Center that comprised of our office tenant, uh, other office tenants, uh, the Department of Developmental Services, Department of Transitional Assistance, as well as our many residents who live in the adjacent residential building, um, you're helping us to continue to uh, realize the vision that Trinity had for this site. Um, as the city is underway on the 415 space garage, parking garage that you see behind us, that will allow us to come in and then uh, start to build the second phase, another 113 units of residential downtown Brockton that uh, we hope to get started on soon. Um, and so you're an integral part as you help us to fill um, the space uh, in this building that we opened in 2015. Um, and we continue to, and we continue to look for, I know uh, as many have asked, we continue to work hard to fill the restaurant space downtown, downstairs that we certainly hope will become a, a key part of the downtown for many years. So, um, you know, it, it's 
great to now be a year ago we were walking through this space it was empty we could see through to the windows and the other side didn't even connect to this space um, you know we had a, a great team and Susan and Brian with their design and of course our architect Kevin O'Neill from Icon Architecture uh, the Aberthaw uh, construction team Jeff Alley Sean Cashman uh, Victor Rodriguez and Keith Waddington Mark Clove who really helped to make the space look the way it does today. And so we're so very excited to see it, see people here working and, and doing great work for the community. Um, and so again, I, I thank you and, and so we welcome you to our building. Great, thank you. Thank you so I, I've asked a couple of my staff members, um, part of our team to share a f um, some, information about what it is they do um, one of the integral parts of our program and um, delivery of legal services in Massachusetts is our AmeriCorps program and our AmeriCorps program director is here and uh, Amy Copperman and Amy why don't you step forward and um, give people an idea of what it is what it is AmeriCorps means for sure um, thank you all for coming um, one of the really unique features of the Justice Center and of South Coastal County's legal services is that they host, we host a statewide program. Um, AmeriCorps Legal Advocates of Massachusetts places AmeriCorps service members in legal aid organizations throughout Massachusetts. We partner with other legal aid organizations, we partner with faith-based agencies, we partner with other kinds of nonprofits that provide legal services. So we have had this program in operation since 2005. Um, I've been the director here since 2015. We currently have 36 service members in 14 different organizations in 12 different cities. So they are spread out, fanned out all over the state. They are a combination of college graduates and law school graduates, and they are providing critical legal services for their communities. We have three who serve in Brockton. They're here right now. Where are you? <laughs> Elaine, Andrea, and Karen. Where's Karen? Karen's back. Karen's over Karen. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, um, we have three in Fall River and two are here. Wave, Crystalline, Brian, is Brian here or did he go? Anyway, there he is, oh, back there. Um, and we have a number of alumni from the AmeriCorps program who are now staff attorneys here at the Justice Center and elsewhere. So Jess, Laura, who else is here? Who, Jess, Laura, um, Victoria um, are all alums. So um, our 300 alum that have been fanned out all over the country are there making a difference in poverty law organizations for their careers. Um, and it is a really exciting project. It is a unique project in the country um, and it comes right out of our Brockton office so we are really thrilled um, that we get to be here um, we have two staff people Kat Roach is our program coordinator and we get to sit here in Brockton every day amongst our wonderful colleagues and then we get to go out in the state and and make a difference in other communities as well so thanks for being here and Last, um, certainly but not least, um, to conclude our remarks is our um, wonderful immigration attorney supervisor, Emily Lung. Emily? Yes. Come on. I did not know I would be concluding our remarks. <laughs> so I, everyone, so I should keep it very short so everyone can get back to eating. Uh, my name's Emily Lung. I'm the immigration unit supervisor. I have the great pleasure and challenge of doing immigration in this day and age. But we have a wonderful team of six staff attorneys and two AmeriCorps advocates that work on our team. Uh, people may have heard that immigration, it's a, little, it's a little challenging at this moment, and we're very fortunate to have amazing community partners, many of whom are in this room and who we work closely with, and we're very fortunate to be in Brockton, which has uh, a robust immigrant community that we try to provide as many services as humanly possible to. Uh, we appreciate your support for us. We appreciate your support for the community. We really enjoy working side by side with all of our partners here, and we look forward to continuing this fun because I think it's not going away, unfortunately, anytime soon. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, it's just, it's wonderful to be in this new space, to all be together again. We're so happy to still be in downtown Brockton. And we really appreciate you coming out to help us celebrate and launch our, uh, our time here in the Enterprise Building. So thank you. <laughs>